Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico. And if you're new to the channel, we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. In today's case in point, we're going to finish out the year 2008 with my 30 favorite albums. I'm not saying these are the 30 best, but these are my 30 favorite. And this is a top 10, so I hope you'll stay and uh, listen out try to keep the video at a reasonable length. So uh, let's go ahead and go with my number 10 choice. Pull up my spreadsheet here. And this is the Roots Rising Down. So I liked uh, Game Theory quite a bit when we were in that year. And yeah, it's terrific. Love the Roots. Uh, this got really good reviews. My favorite song is Criminal. And Philadelphia's Roots great players, uh, great cadence in the, in the raps. And yeah, it flows. It opens with rising up and closes with rising down. And it's a good, solid album. So I really like that. Uh, number nine um, from Bristol, England is Portishead. Third, I've got a physical copy of this. And... Uh, yeah, so, you know, they're not a very prolific band, are they? They've got three studio albums and a live album, and that's it. That's over a long, extended career that started in the 90s. But uh, what can you say? What can you say about Portishead? You know, my favorite songs on here are The Rip and uh, probably Machine Gun. Is that what? Yeah, Machine Gun. Uh, but... Really interesting album, dark and some uh, sort of moody ballads. And it doesn't sound exactly like their other two albums, which I like quite a bit. So uh, Beth Gibbons, such an interesting vocalist. And that's it. Uh, the Roots, or I mean, uh, Portishead, third. Uh, now, of course, this, was, this album was raved about. This is number six on Rate Your Music. That's including anthologies and compilations, which, by the way, I do include on my list here, and we'll have one of those coming up. So uh, number eight is a debut album. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Vampire Weekend. I think this is a terrific album. Uh, five singles from this album. Those are probably my favorite cuts. But this is a fun album. All these songs like Oxford, Comma, and um, the, just great, great stuff. And and you you hear this. I mean, here's a band from New York City, and they sound like on some tracks like Cape Cod, Qua, Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. They sound like they're from uh, the Congo. They really remind me of all that. And I've listened to a lot of African music. And these guys, they copy it pretty well. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing for a bunch of young players that they're able to uh, pick up on that influence of Central African music and incorporate that into pop. And, and the lyrics are funny and the vocals are rock solid. But these are good players. Yeah, Vampire Weekend. Um, now I've continued to follow them, but there's something about this debut album. This is my favorite and will remain my favorite. Um, this is one of the albums that, uh, from my top 30 that Pitchfork really liked at 8.8. .8. So, all right. Number seven out of New York, uh, also is, uh, the hold steady with stay positive. And I always enjoy, um, Craig's, uh, songs here and his i always enjoy his story telling and this this is a pretty twisted album uh, my favorite song is sequestered in memphis uh such great lyrics sequestered in memphis subpoenaed in texas and craig's got just such interesting lyrics and the band is just always playing at fast tempos on fire and painting all these pictures I, I love the hold steady. Um, not everyone's a cup of tea, but, uh, you know, all music didn't like this particular album, which is really odd because it was generally uh, praised all the way around. It got really good reviews. A lot of people think this is their best album, um, but 
Yeah. Love it. Number seven, the hold steady. Number six, uh, this one might surprise you a little bit. I have a hard copy of this from Tucson, Arizona, Calexico, carried to dust. And look at this. I have a library copy. You ever seen such a thing? Um, when, when the library was getting rid of their CDs, where did I pay for this? Doesn't say, but, um, I used to get some pretty good deals at the library, but now they seem kind of quaint, uh, but carried to dust. This is just a, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Look at this Las Vegas Clark County library, but, uh, the first song is my favorite Victor Jara's hands, but it doesn't let up from there. You've got uh, Mexican instrumentation, trumpet, um, maybe some Haranda. It's not. It's not in the uh, when you look at Wikipedia at the at the uh, instrumentation, it doesn't mention any Mexican guitars, but I, I think they're on here. And these guys know how to play, and I think this is their best album, Carried to Dust. I highly recommend this. Um, this got really good reviews, and a lot of people don't know about this album. But and it's a grower; it takes a little time to get into. I've been listening to it for years, and when I was listening to it for this project, it just uh, it just hit; it just fired on all cylinders. So love that Claxico carried to dust. Number five. This might surprise you too, because this is a band that after this album, I do not care about this band anymore. But man, they made one really great one on the way out, and that's Coldplay, Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends. So this will probably split you guys. Um, yeah, you know, the reviews were very split. All Music gave it four and a half stars, but Metacritic only 72, Pitchfork only 6.9. But these songs like the title track, Viva La Vida, Lost, Violet Hill, 42, I think these are fantastic. And, you know, a lot of things are written about uh, Brian Eno helping with the production. But I think he just uh, kind of peppers some uh, sounds on the album. Uh, he's not really the main producer to my ears, but this Coldplay, um, this to me is a four and a half star album. Uh, I love it. I, I think that uh, Chris Martin's got great vocals, and I think the lyrics are intelligent on this album. And, and where they and, and I think it's better than X and Y, which was a little bit dense. That was the one before, but boy, after this, they sure took a left turn, didn't they? And when I saw them on the Super Bowl, I just thought, like, WTF? What is going on with this band? But Viva La Vida was fantastic album. I used to earn own a hard copy of it but i sold it before i came down here number four is an album that really clicked with me recently this is uh paul weller from uh london uh former leader of the jam this is 22 dreams and 22 dreams has 21 songs on it so i don't understand that but anyway uh with the bonus track it's 22 uh this is such a diverse album. Do you know this album went to number one in the UK? Uh, it just it didn't cross over to the United States as well, but or any of the other American countries. But Paul Weller's 22 Dreams, uh, like the Calexico, is an album that rewards on repeated listenings. And if you haven't listened to it, it's terrific. It's not on Spotify. So I had to listen to it on YouTube, and thankfully there's some good playlists. There's one with uh, all the official videos, which is really cool. And I don't know, I just love Paul Weller's smoky voice and this combination of R&B with Englishness. I mean, I was thinking as I was listening to the album again yesterday, it's kind of like Marvin Gaye meets the Kinks. It's just this really interesting blend. So I love that. Number three, okay, we're in the top three. And if you guys, well, you guys are younger, but um, I've done this two times in my life, two times in my life, and I'm really embarrassed to say it. But I bought two copies of the same, 
<laughs> I bought two copies of the same album because I forgot I owned it. The other one was a Hal and Wolf collection. Um, this is, you know, another library copy. But this is Elbow, the seldom seen kid. And if you guys have followed me before, you know that I think Guy Garvey is one of the best lyricists of the 21st century. Grounds for Divorce, my favorite song on here song about alcoholism uh, of late there's a hole there's a hole in my neighborhood of late which i cannot well anyway, i don't remember the exact lyric but he goes to the bar and he just cannot leave uh, and then the song just hits so hard when the uh, guitar comes in but you have mirror ball and um all, all these other great songs on here and i like his voice he's not a classically perfect singer but it's just one of those voices that I like. Elbow, I mean, such a literate band without being too highbrow. And I love them. So number two, I, I know I have a hard copy of this. Um, I thought I had it out here. I, I guess I forgot to pull it out. But this is the album that pretty much everybody agrees is the best album of the year. Four and a half stars on all music, 88 on Metacritic, 9.2 Pitchfork. This was their favorite pick. And that's Dear Science by TV on the Radio. Dance and Choose and Stork and Owl and Family. What was that song called? Family? Ah, spacing it out. But yeah, I love this album. And, you know, I have to be in the mood for it. Um... But when I am in the mood for it, it hits perfectly. I loved it the first time I played it. It was a gift from a friend of mine, and I've just just fallen in love with TV on the radio's Dear Science. Uh, and this will not be there, you know, unlike Coldplay, which you will not see on my list again, um, you'll see TV on the radio again. They've got another album coming up in the future that I really like, so... Dear Science, uh, this was universally praised, and I love it. All right, number one, and this one surprised me that I put it number one. I knew I liked it, and it's an anthology. And the fact that it made number one, that's just amazing, because it's outtakes. It's a collection of outtakes. But it's Bob Dylan's The Bootleg Series, Volume 8, Telltale Signs. Dylan, his garbage can is better than most people's top-notch music. And this is a collection of outtakes, songs from soundtracks, live tracks, just scraps. And it's not in chronological order. It's got alternative versions of songs. Sometimes the alternative versions are better than the originals. And this was a universally praised album. It's uh, even Pitchfork liked it at 8.6. Bob Dylan, uh, the bootleg series, fantastic, double disc, and it doesn't get boring. Um, he's got it. I like this uh, CD label, if you can see it, uh, with the scribble on it. It's pretty cool. So I'm not sure how this is in the light, but uh, uh, Mississippi and all these great songs on here, but I never get tired of listening to the Bootleg Series Volume 8. I think it's one of the stronger entries in his Bootleg Series. And that's it. We're going to wrap it up. I decided I'd keep this video a little shorter. So if you like what we're doing, a senior uh, reacting to the new music of the 21st century, and also uh, in this Legacy Series, uh, reviewing uh, some of the albums of the 21st century. So... Uh, I'll be coming up. Um, I've been working on 2009, and that'll be really cool because that'll close out the decade. And when I finish this series, I'll have 300 albums from the OOs. Yeah, that means I've done a lot of listening. So let me know what you think of my list. Let me know what your picks are. And I really appreciate if you hung till the end. Uh, leave me a note that says you hung to the end. Uh, let's see. Tell me what uh, color shirt you're wearing, okay? And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.